Uh, this is a really interesting uh, film, not just for the subject matter, which is uh, the great Russian ballet dancer Rudolf Nureyev, but also for the way that the music works in the film, just by nature of, of the story. You're, you, it's about ballet, it's about dancing, and certainly you were kind of working in the shadow of you know composers like Tchaikovsky in this film score. Can you talk a little bit about how uh, your music fits into the film and how it was affected by the subject matter? Well, I, that, I, I think you've hit upon the, the, the main uh, worry when I first uh, started on the project, which, which was how, how do you write music that, that sits between two uh, famous, incredible uh, pieces by Tchaikovsky? I mean, that's a, that's a very daunting task. And uh, I decided that what I would do is write very complete, fully fleshed out classical pieces and that I would give them to Rafe. So That's that Rafe Fiennes, the, the, the director. The, exactly. Yeah. So, so, that, so that it would be as if he had discovered a, an old composition somewhere. And, and was just using that and, and cutting it into his film. And uh, b because f a film music it w works as underscore and typically it has a bit more space in it than, um, than classical music does. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and so this was quite a, quite a different and, and bold approach. Uh, but it, but it seemed to work and, and, and Rafe, whenever we've worked together, we've always had uh, we've always worked with quite uncompromising artistic uh, ideas and and he he really was brave with this and when the music plays in the film it it really plays there's no other sound there's virtually no talking on on top of it when you get music you you really get the music hmm. it's interesting reading about your collaboration with Ray Fiennes who not only directs the film but he also acts in the film this is really his his baby you know so to speak but it's the third time that you've scored a film for him, right? That's right, yes. Can you talk a little bit about your journey together with Ray Fiennes? Because I, I love a story that you told about the first film you did with him, Coriolanus, the Shakespeare film, uh, where you introduced a solo trumpet, and now you finally got him in front of an 80-piece orchestra with this <laughs> <laughs> this movie. Yeah, well, absolutely, because you know at the start he was very concerned about how – music would affect the the performance and 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 I think you know especially as an actor I could see that because you 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 might perform uh the the scene in a certain way but when you when you put music on a scene it can be it can be very powerful you can you can twist uh, the emotion you can bend the 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 intention of the emotion um and and so uh I suppose as an actor, you might go see a film and and you think that you intended the performance to be one thing, but the music pushes it towards another. Mm -hmm. And so he was very worried about about the music overtaking what was already on the screen. And I needed to to show him that I could be uh, very sensitive and very understanding to 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 the to the emotional narrative that that he wanted to have in the film. Is he a, a musical person? I mean, is it you know? Does he have any kind of background in music, or is he working mostly from his artistic uh, sensibilities? He, he, no, I don't think he has a uh, much background in in music apart from uh, being a, a great appreciator of music. Yeah. And that's the other thing that I always said to him and say to all directors: we don't need to speak about music. In fact, in fact, speaking about music is the most difficult thing to do because music is the thing that we use when words aren't good enough to express it mm. uh, especially in in film because if it could just be expressed with with dialogue between actors uh then you wouldn't need the music and so and so trying to use words to describe it is is very difficult and in fact it, it's better not to it's better to talk about anything and everything apart from the music and just get a feel for the emotional narrative. Yeah. Um, but what's great about Rafe is that he, he really 
feels things deeply. He's very he considers things deeply, and he's got a great sense of aesthetic that I that I really trust, and I, and I think he trusts mine as well. So that makes for a really happy collaboration. Yeah, you can really sense that even in the just the little video clips that you've posted on social media of the uh, rehearsal sessions, a- and you can kind of see the give and take between the two of you. I was struck by watching some of the recording with the uh, violinist uh, Lisa Bathiashvili. Uh, where you ask her to play a little bit more ugly, and 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 Rafe asks her to play less beautifully <laughs> a certain <laughs> yes. a certain part, and, and you know it's really interesting to hear that that kind of thing. Uh, being said by the director and by the composer. I mean, where, where is that coming from? Is it just the tone for that particular uh, segment in the movie? It absolutely. I, it, it's it's funny because that that section of the film ended up being cut out of the film. Ah. Uh, so that piece never made it in, and it, not even on the album. It was it was quite a short piece, but um, but. It well, we was, all want to hear it now. <laughs> <laughs> but it was it it was a um, it was a bit where Nuriev was was feeling very angry and upset, mm. and and I think R- R- Rafe was searching for for a, a little extra something there. And I, the reason I posted it was because it was quite an unusual conversation. You, you know, you don't you don't often find yourself saying to to one of the uh, sort of world's greatest solo violinists, can you play that a bit more, yeah. a bit more ugly? But, um, uh, but, uh, but, uh, you know, that that is the process of filmmaking, just trying to, to find uh, that that little extra detail that that yeah. bring brings out the magic. But I think interestingly, we we struggled with it, and and actually the struggle was with the scene and how the scene worked in the film, and the decision was to drop the scene ultimately. Well, uh, you can also talk about the violin as as a character in this movie, sort of an offstage character because it's involved in so many of your your tracks. Um, and I guess maybe you were both directing her, like you would an actor. Well, I feel that way about about the mu the musicians that I use. I I cast them specifically I write specifically for certain musicians that I know I like to work with and there was something about Lisa's style of playing that 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 was uh, she it wasn't she plays with sentimentality it's not sentimental but she plays with sentimentality if that makes any sense it's 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 a subtle difference but there was something about it that really yeah. connected to the character and this and also in her own story having been born in Russia and and also leaving Soviet Russia to Germany with when she was a child with her family that that she really connected with the story so she was able to bring a, a lot of emotion to it, and and that's so important because music really is the soul of of the, the emotional soul of the film, and in order for that to, to to in order for it to work well, you need to have a soulful and passionate performance. Mm. Whoever you're working with, how did she come to be involved with the uh, the music? Uh, I uh, I went to Deutsche Grammophon mm. and. Uh, and asked them if they could recommend some violinists, and uh, and she was interested in the project, and and I was delighted. To to be honest, I I I was, I I had hoped to get a great violinist, but I hadn't expected to get somebody quite at her level. Yeah. But you were a violinist, right? Are you still well? I, I, I would use that loosely, but <laughs> that, but yes, I learned from the I learned from the age of four, wow. and I played, you know, till my till my early twenties, and and of course I I can still play because I, I think it's a a bit like riding a bike; you don't really forget. But um, but you wouldn't want to hear me play <laughs> violin. <laughs> but give us a little uh, background on you for folks who don't know. Of course, you've written soundtracks for for many many films. How did you get uh, into the the world of writing for film? Well, uh, partly by accident. I wanted to be I wanted to be a guitarist in a rock and roll band, but uh, but I, I I wanted to to work in in music in some way, and I got very luckily got introduced to a composer called Michael Kamen, hmm. and uh, and. Uh, Michael taught me a lot, and I, I I started off literally just making tea, and and working my way, 
working my way up the ladder and uh, building opportunities and uh, and then suddenly I, I was writing writing film and 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 then you know that grew into all the other things I do writing ballet and 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 different things. Yeah, I, I read that your uh, mother was a dancer. Is that right? She yes, yeah, she well she danced she yes yeah, she danced ballet not professionally but uh-huh, okay. uh, but for for uh, most of her young life and um, and so she always took me to the ballet from a very young age. So it it was always part of part of my life. So it wasn't really that difficult of a transition for you to uh, to, to incorporate your music into the Tchaikovsky mold, I imagine. Uh, well, you know, whenever you're... Uh, what, what's similar about it, because I've, I've written a couple of ballets, and what's similar is that you're writing narrative music. Mm-hmm. You're writing an emotional narrative. And that's the same in film and it's the same in ballet. In ballet, the music is perhaps a, a, a more prominent. Uh, so, but when I came to this project, because right at the start, we, before we'd shot any of the film, we, we had to record some music and we had to make plans with choreographers and write new music uh, for 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 this, uh, some choreographed scenes that unfortunately also got dropped from the film. Um, so, so I, the the that I'd worked with choreographers before and with dancers before meant that that I had a. a a good um, knowledge of the process and of how to uh, to to write uh, so that it would work easily and and make everything else work easily when they were filming. Yeah. Now, has your experience with this film been been very different from your work in other films? Well, the, the the process was different because I I wasn't writing to picture, which is traditionally what what you do. Uh, but um, but but ultimately, for in my experience, what ties all my work together is that I'm interested in emotional narrative, mm. and and so uh, this film was that as well, and and uh, and the collaborating with Rafe is always a joy. We've yeah. we've we've got a very a very good emotional connection, and I, I think we really enjoy working with each other. Yeah, that's wonderful. Well, listening to the album is a pleasure as well. And and I sense this listening to it, you know, makes you want to see the film. So, <laughs> well, I'm I'm glad I'm glad to hear that and I yeah. I hope you get to see it and enjoy it. Composer Elon Ashkari uh, who has written the soundtrack to the film The White Crow, directed by Ray Fiennes. Wonderful music. Thank you so much for uh, sharing the backstory here on FM91. Thank you for having me on.